We've always been barbecue junkies. Being a fan and not being able to afford it anymore after being laid off is what got us to the point where if we can't afford it, then let's make it. Yo soy Anabel Ramirez, fundadora de Rey Barbecue, la que manda Rey. <laughs> My name is Renee Alexander Ramirez, but I'm also known as Ray, and this is Ray's Barbecue. The first even thinking of Ray's Barbecue started back in December 2013, where I was posting pictures on these uh, forums, but it was just for my own consumption. I was on my last two unemployment checks. One of my friends tells me from those forums, hey Ray, do you sell your stuff? He's like, sell it from your house. And I said, well, I'll give it a shot. I placed on that on Facebook. I sold $60. Those $60 turned into 120. And every weekend it was just three times, four times fold until we opened up this shop. Desde chiquita me crié en la cocina y mi mamá tenía un restaurancito y por eso a mí me encanta. My wife tells me, hey, so what are you going to do with your customers? And we looked at how much cash we had saved up. My mom told me, let me help you out with leasing a restaurant. I started, you know, prepping a lot. But of course, you run out of money. Towards the end, I decided Mother's Day is coming up. Let's make up some barbecue. So I said, well, I'll get caught again. I'll pay the fine. We were selling about $1,000 every 30, 40 minutes. We were doing about 100 racks of ribs. We were doing about 500 pounds of pulled pork. And we were selling all that within four hours. It was massive. It was like Tony Montana style. Deep inside, it wasn't what my potential could bring out. I was just happy that I was satisfying the masses, and the masses were happy. But I knew that it was just the tip of the iceberg. It's not glamorous, <laughs> that's for sure. You work a lot more than if you were just a regular employee. I mean, you find yourself working 16, 17 hours a day. But you know what? I'll take a nap, and I'll get over it. Now I'm enjoying some of the rewards. But for the last three years, it was all money come in and money go out, buy money. I make mistakes every single day. From those mistakes, I learn so much that the next time, it just gets better. Sometimes you just gotta listen and not let your pride get involved. Just do it. Coming over from my first generation and my mom, you know, taking the effort to come over in the 1970s and immigrate to the U.S. was a big step. It was a good one, but unfortunately, it takes a toll on you. Our parents were always working long hours, long days. Your parents are trying to make both for yourself. It makes you stronger, but at the same time, it's very easy to fall within the cracks of the bad stuff. Antes de llegar aquí a los Estados Unidos, no teníamos ni para comer. Tuvimos que ir a pedir estampillas y todo eso para los niños, porque pasamos momentos muy difíciles. But it's one of those things you can't have everything in life. Somebody has to break ground, appreciate them for that, and love them for what they are, but then don't follow that chain. No money is worth more than your family. Para ahora tener un restaurante tan exitoso es todo un sueño hecho realidad. One year after I opened up, we just weren't happy in the direction we were going. I told my wife and kids, we're shutting down the restaurant and we're driving to Austin. Austin, what are you gonna do in Austin? I mean, I'm gonna go check out that famous place people waited like six hours for. We didn't even know what brisket was. And then we took the bite, and it was just like in those cartoons where you hear the angels. Ah, I said that first bite. My kids and I looked at each other and we're like, we gotta learn how to make this. If you don't know it, figure it out. Now that I'm a restaurant owner, I wake up in the morning, I watch barbecue videos, along with nightmares in the kitchen. Me and my wife, we learn not to do those mistakes. Empezamos con máquinas con las más baratitas y usadas y así fuimos creciendo. Nunca nos imaginamos cómo la gente iba a llegar por los sándwiches. Thanks to social media, we're bringing in customers from Hong Kong, we're getting customers from Australia, from England, from Dubai. I have several customers uh, email me last week and say, Ray, we're doing a layover for 10 hours and we want to go to your restaurant. Monday, can't, we don't open. Okay, we'll catch you on the way back. <laughs> so, so they don't give up. Salvadorian, doing Texas-style barbecue and actually being successful at it, I'm still asking myself the same question. I do have my one item. I made it specifically for the neighborhood, which is a meat man burrito, or some people call it a brisket burrito. Come on, we're Hispanics. We love burritos, and there's never been a barbecue burrito. 
you're gonna do something that is not part of your culture, you better do it so damn well. So when people that are from that particular area that you're cooking come over, they're just blown away. And when Texans come over, we've earned their respect and they know that we're Salvadoran.